silicone injections to give her the perfect bottom. Yeah, except uh, it wasn't silicone, and uh, those procedures left her close to death. Uh, she had to have a quadruple amputation. Uh, April, as you can see, is in our LA studio. Good morning, April. Good morning. Hi, you guys. Hi, April. Um, April, oh, I've been reading up on this and, 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 and hearing your story, and it is just mm -hmm. a nightmare, a nightmare that, that you still have to live to this day. And we see you've got two prosthetic uh, legs on there. Uh, we see the, the, the stumps left there on your, your arm. Uh, what about yes. the whole... Why did and you... Don't, don't forget the butt cheeks. Oh, oh, I did forget. I lost those too. Don't yeah. forget that because that's really important. That is, and that's <laughs> what it was. That's what it was all about. That's where it started. Yes, tell us absolutely. about. Tell us about life uh, before the silicone injections, and tell tell us why you wanted them. Well, life before the injections. Um, I've been a hairstylist for the last twenty five plus years. I've been in the beauty industry for the last 25 plus years. So life, to, you know, I have been enhancing women, you know, for so long. So that was my life was to enhance women. And um, my life is just, you know, just a wonderful life. What was mm -hmm. it? What was it, April, about your bottom that you didn't like? Why did you want to change it? I thought it was flat. And when I was a child, I was about having a flat butt. So I kind of grew up with that issue inside of me, uh, thinking that when I get you know older or get grown that I would get injections or something. I didn't even know it was injection, but I felt like I would get a larger butt. Uh, April, had you not he heard the stories? We had a girl in here last summer, and her, her story was terrible. She had cooking oil injected into her bottom, and you know what they did? They sealed the holes with super glue. Um, had you not heard about the horror stories prior to this? Honestly, I had not heard one horror story because I never did any research. I never, I mean, I was 39 years old when I actually got the injections and the lady came into my salon and I really, and told me that she does injections and I was so happy and I was so excited like, oh my God, God sent this just for me. I thought it was some kind of blessing. And April, these were called um, pumping parties, I understand, so you go to someone's house or they come to your home and I went to some I, I'm sorry no you carry on okay um, actually I went to someone's home I didn't actually go to a pumping party because a pumping party consists of um, you know several people there getting injections so I kind of had my own private party and yes I did go to someone's house who wasn't licensed it was on the black market Mm -hmm. But you obviously <laughs> didn't know that then. Uh, tell us what happened. What's Absolutely the procedure? Not. What's the procedure like? How painful was it? Uh, the procedure actually is very painful. Um, um, I showed up at her house. She asked me to bring these special panties that has the butt cheeks uh, cut out in them, and um, she told me to lay on her daughter's bed. She put a sheet down. She had gloves and everything, and she kind of told me that I was going to need um, four sets of injections and um, this is going to be my first set and when she started to do the injections it was very painful you can actually feel this product or whatever this is like it's going inside of your nerves and your muscles and, and I asked her I said should it be painful like this and she said, yeah, but the pain will go away once the product is in your body. But, and it did go away. But yeah, it was, yes, it was yeah, very painful. Because I, I presume what they're doing is either into the muscle or the bit between the muscle and your skin. They're putting right. in this uh, spongy stuff, whatever it is, silicone or whatever, and it's mm -hmm. expanding and it's pushing the, the buttock muscle and everything is being stretched. Right. Yeah, and, and therefore yes. very, very hurtful. So, okay, that was treatment number one. And it, mm -hmm. and it hurt, but it went away. And then you went back for treatment number two. Same procedure? Yes. Yes, same procedure, same process. The only thing that was different um, this time was when I was leaving her house, I had an epiphany like, you know, what are you doing? Are you serious? You're allowing somebody to inject something in your body. She's not a doctor. What are you doing? And I really thought in that moment that I had escaped something, that, you know, God had given me a sign to stop. Mm. And perhaps maybe that was a sign to stop because what I've researched since all of this happened to me, that when people normally get this procedure done, when they're going to die, they normally die when they're having the procedure done. 
So you didn't. Or right after. So you mm -hmm. you saw the light and and you didn't go back. But then right. things started. It was already too late. Things started going mm -hmm. wrong. It was too too late. So tell us what happened because your skin started becoming itchy and. Yes, the first the, the first sign was the bu the buttocks started to get hard. That was the first sign. The second sign was discoloration. That was the second sign. The third sign was itching. And then came the biggest problem of all was the pain. How mm -hmm. bad how bad was that pain? That pain I always say was like a toothache, um, labor pains and throw in a migraine. Oh, mm -hmm. now, now April, just, Absolutely. Be just because time's against us, I just want to sort of mm -hmm. skip, skip ahead a bit. And then obviously okay. you, were, you went to see, you, you know, you had to get medical advice as to how to put this right. And mm -hmm. basically you had all sorts of suggestions over a long period of time and they sounded horrible. What were the doctors saying to you? I mean, a lot of them didn't know what to do with you, but what were, they, what were some of the more weird suggestions as to how to put you right? Well, the, um, most doctors actually were saying that it couldn't be removed. That's what I kind of ran into a lot was, you know, it could not be removed. Um, you know, uh, you're going to have to live with it. And only until I really showed up, you know, really with, with 24 hours to live, you know, and they really went in and started to remove the silicone along with my butt cheeks. And, and you say you had 24 hours to live. The reason being what had septicemia set and blood poisoning? Yes, I caught a staph infection, and they don't know to this day if the staph infection came from the silicone or it came from some outside source. I mean, mm -hmm. we're saying silicone there, April. This was like bathroom sealant you discovered after. Industrial, uh, yes. <clears throat> they industrial call that strength. industrial grade silicone. Um, mm -hmm. Well, this led, as you said, you, you were very, very ill. Uh, they had to put you in a coma for two months. You had 27 different surgeries, yes. um, starting where they had to actually amputate your buttocks. I yes. Mean, that's horrific. What did yes, you know? Yes, that is horrific. You didn't know all this until you came round, I suppose. No, I did not. Well, I knew that, um, well, actually, when I arrived at the hospital and I kind of heard them say, oh, oh, my God, we can't find her blood pressure. It's really low. And she has, like, 24 hours to live. And because I had been living in pain for so long, actually, it was a relief for me. I was like, oh, wow, at least I won't be in, in pain anymore. And once I woke up a couple of months later, because I was in an um, induced coma, um, that's when I realized that my butt cheeks were gone, but I also realized that I wasn't in pain anymore, not that pain anyway. Well, you're not physically in pain. I mean, mentally, my goodness me, you must be so mentally scarred by all of this. And yet, talking to you off camera and talking to you during this interview, you're a very positive person. Um, you see, I wondered, why, why, you know, have you sued anybody over this? Or what is your mission in life from here on in? Well, I don't think that um, when, um, you know, God or the universe or whatever you see as your higher being, give your opportunity to live past the 24 hours that they have given me to live, I don't think you take that time to be trying to blame anybody. You use that time to hope that you would save someone else from ever having to experience anything like this. What is and I'm your just warning? grateful that I have that. My warning is for us to not ever look for something outside of ourselves to validate ourselves. We're already born whole, we're already born perfect, and we're already born complete. And there's nothing outside of us that would never make us feel good if we don't feel good on the inside. And do you feel and that's anything? Yeah. And you know, you know, I know initially you obviously didn't feel good about yourself. Even after all that you've been through, are you now beginning to heal? Are you now beginning to feel good about yourself? You know what, actually, to be honest with you, when I got the injections, I really felt that I really had great self-esteem. I, I mean, that's what I kind of taught, is to love yourself. I just thought I was just enhancing, because I had enhanced women in so many ways for so long. So I thought in that moment that I was very secure. It's only looking back on it where I see that there had to be an extreme issue to do something so extreme. 
goodness me. Um, yes. A, a, an amazing but terrible um, story. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, we, we wish you well in thank adapting you so to, to, to your life now. And, and thank you so much for telling us that story and, and sharing yes. and giving that message to other women who may feel yes. a bit more imperfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, April. thank you guys so much. Thank you.